Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm Daughter Five or Larry Rhodes. We're recording this on Sunday morning, July 9th, 2023. And as usual, we have our co host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. It's the tag team duo, the OGs, Daughter Five and the Wombat. <laughs> the dynamic duo. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. I'd, I'd bet anything. In Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. And we'll tell you more about them after the mid-show break. So be sure to stick around. Wombat, what's our topic today? Are, what are we? Just in your entertainment? That's, that's the, the conditions. If I'm a little bit slower today, forgive me. I got a little bit of a head cold. But the idea is I'd like to talk about how do you stay entertained in heaven? And I actually found a really interesting scenario that would both explain how we are entertained, but also neatly and perfectly to the point where even Larry will be convinced that souls exist, how to explain away the problem of evil. We'll also be talking about North Korea, um, how God's a bully, and uh, uh, the whole controversy behind being told, bless you as an atheist. It's not as big as you think. But before we get into it, let's let's touch bases with ourselves. I know for a fact that I'm a little under the weather today. Not sure why, probably because of how hot it was, and I'm just a little bit exhausted. I don't feel like I have any particular symptoms, but it's been really, really hot recently, and we've been getting a lot of weird storms too. So right. my my body's having a hard time trying to figure out, is it dry? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it rainy? Is it what's going on? When can I go outside? When should I not go outside? Because I can step out right now when it's sunny, and I know potentially in a half hour, it could be tormenting uh storms left and right through the neighborhood so it's enough to keep me indoors for a while and i could use the rest yeah. larry how you been holding up through this oh, i've been fine but you know it's it's summer and in summer you get those heat storms in the evening and they're heat pop-ups storms. yeah so you really don't know when they're gonna pop up mm. uh, i tried to ride my bike yesterday but i went out and the battery was dead oh and no i left left my little thing hooked up to it and then drained the battery but i should be able to to go again tomorrow yeah oh, i got news for you though i tried a new game okay what do you got what do you got horizon zero dawn oh the first one <laughs> okay so you're yeah. playing horizon zero dawn okay okay yeah. okay yeah. i i recommended that game to you, you a while did. back. i and did that's one of the yeah, reasons yeah, yeah. i got it and are I'm, you playing I'm thoroughly, it right now? thoroughly enjoying it awesome at this moment no no okay but i have been playing it this morning okay so talk to me about uh where you are or have you just started the game like what's no I, i've got to where i can tame the horses and uh I've gone through the trials. And You've gone through the that, trials. So. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm okay. level 10. Yeah, yeah. So. You got some... Ca- Man, I'm so happy because, you know, I I I try to tell people, like, this is a quality game. It is. And, and most people tier. don't realize it until they get their hands on it. It's one of those yeah. games where you can't explain it, but mm-hmm. you can give the game and be like, five seconds, they'll understand, oh, this is a good game. I'm going to play it from beginning yeah. to end. Yeah, but got a good story. That's the important thing. Right. You're like, it's cavemen. You're kind of like a caveman and you're like getting resources. Oh, so it's like a, a resource management game where you don't have no technology. And it's like, no, no, no. But you also have sci-fi stuff too. And there are robots. So it's like, so it's a mm-hmm. sci-fi game where you just program yeah. computers all day. It's like, no, no, no. It's both of those put together and they have no idea how that works. And you're like, you just have to play the game. Yeah. And it's really fun. You're going to have a really fun time with that game. I guarantee yeah. it. Oh, well, I'm sure. Uh, I'm really happy to hear that too. Single player adventures. You've been playing a lot of multiplayer games too. Uh, mm-hmm. The only issue with those is they tend to be, they tend to rely on the interactions with other people, and so and when you, we all know how, <laughs> how solid those can be, <laughs> how positive. It paints, yeah, it paints the sort of gamer I am. But mm-hmm. to have a catered single player experience where you can just feel your power curve and people programmed respond to that and the empowerment that that feels and the challenges that are catered just for we expect only one person to do this it'll be hard but you can do it by your own uh that's such a great experience to have there will be a part of the game where you have to go to another area of the map and you start to realize how big the world is and you think oh my gosh i thought i was playing this game for like this much 
now it's like oh this is fun because now i can actually explore it's going to be really mm -hmm. really great yeah um so i remember playing that game overnight i that when that game dropped for pc i was so happy because i thought it would only be on playstation and now that's on pc i was mm -hmm. so happy right um but that's a great way to stay entertained wouldn't you agree larry oh yeah especially when you're 73 years old <laughs> yeah now, i used now, to dance do karate do all kinds of things but my knees are blown my, oh no okay my hips and you know and all, but i can play games so i do nice yeah we can make virtual hip dancing for you don't worry though in heaven you'll have all the knees and uh -huh. and, and hips support that yeah you have. But sure but you'll also have what in my opinion would be is the best entertainment in the world this entertainment is being able to and now before we have the christians jump on i'm just saying this is a tongue -in cheek <laughs> explanation for uh describing why we have evil what's the what's the issue with evil and i have this interesting idea based on a conversation i've had so it's not entirely my idea but heaven is forever but heaven can also potentially be boring in some senses why because you don't have any sort of entertainment and so how do you, but you can't have a boring heaven. So what kind of entertainment exists in heaven to keep you entertained, right? And I thought, what better entertainment than to be able to like look into the lives of people. Like you have a big screen TV and you just have a channel and every person's life is a channel, right? So you have a billion channels, billions and billions of channels. And anytime you want to, you can flip a button, turn on your TV, flip your channels and go into the life of someone who's living a life right now on earth yeah that's a earth. common trope among uh, christians too that you know your parents are looking down on you at any exactly. particular that's time you... your, your grandmother or whatever is watching you yes so be good yes it's looking over your grandbabies looking over mm -hmm. your great great grandchildren making sure yeah. everyone's right speaking up being their little ghost helpers or telling them hey don't go down yeah. that path you can have some interaction buttons if your your points are high yeah you've got a million story. channels up there you uh, seven billion channels i guess <laughs> <laughs> so many channels and yeah and some of them are x-rated <laughs> oh no yeah 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 there's that too maybe not in heaven maybe not in heaven maybe that's the other place that we're thinking about but i would say this you can interact but you can mostly just watch and so if you wanted to see if you want to experience someone winning the lottery you can flip to the channel you can flip to the lottery channel and just non-stop get the the delight of people scratching that ticket and finding that they have the winning numbers and you feel so good because they feel so good and they're like wow this is great i'm getting the same experience they had this is amazing so you can get those wonderful experiences uh baby showers people proposing getting accepted to going to a wedding promotions lotteries as i said before uh graduating but you can also get some of the more terrible stuff too. Say you get tired of all the good stuff happening and you need to like spice it up a bit. Maybe you want to see what's it like to get shot and you flip to the purple getting shot channel. Or what's it like to be homeless living under a bridge and you can flip to the people living under a bridge channel and be like, oh, okay, this is pretty, this is pretty good. I need some drama. I need some suspense. Mm -hmm. Can you give me the channel where someone's running from their lives through an alley with a gang of people trying to chase them down and beat them to death with a melee weapon? And I'll just change the channel just before it happens. All the suffering on earth is for a purpose. And the purpose is to entertain the people in heaven so they can have something to watch and have fun with. And you might say, Larry, I know what you're saying. You're scoffing because you say, that's terrible. I was like, no, because, because you're going to be in heaven forever. Think about that. It's infinity. It's an infinite symbol mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. over a temporary okay. period of time well, well here's temporary let's, period let's of time. talk about the infinity of heaven infinity now. divided by zero is still in, infinity it's still a lot yeah, yeah. well let, <laughs> yeah. let me ask you this um uh, how by long two, is two, five two, billion two. years to infinity i'm sorry what's up how long is five billion years to infinity infinity you said from five billion to infinity it's still how, infinity. how how do you when you compare five billion years to infinity how much is that it's an infinite difference is a, a tiny 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 speck of time compared to infinity absolutely, right absolutely well in five billion years our sun is going to swell up to such size it'll kill all the humans on earth yep, and everything and that, else by the way yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, what yeah, are yeah. we going to do after that we'll have to get we'll all have our to channels money. are go blank we'll have netflix i think we'll have netflix we'll have uh hulu we'll have all those episodes all of history that we can go back through and watch individual it's all, lives it's all replays yeah 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 it's all replays it's all <laughs> we're good yeah yeah the classics we'll have all the seinfelds we'll have all well, the at the end of elements. at the end of Just infinity the, if it ever it never gets close to it then well everything will be uh replays and and 
a classics and old. I hear because you, you've replayed you five, them a million times. But you have five billion, <laughs> you have five billion years of replays. Think about that. There's no, still well. people meeting for Star Trek conventions from off the first season. Like you're gonna have your fandoms, you're gonna have your groups, you're gonna be playoff games. That's how you keep people entertained. If it really gets that mm. bad, God will yeah. Oh, how how entertaining life. would some uh, peon's life if I'm like the middle of the dark ages be? I don't know. Why why are you getting upset? <laughs> this is for you. This is this is for your entertainment. <laughs> Larry, I'm just saying it's not very. Uh, I mean, it's the value of that particular entertainment wouldn't last very long. I guess that's what I was saying. Compared to saying. infinity, I hear what you're saying. Compared to infinity, I hear what you're saying. You're saying there's literally nothing I can. I mean, do what are you going to do unique for your bored. three three trillionth birthday? <laughs> 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 and after you learn. Every, uh, to master every instrument that was ever invented you know, right is, right 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 it's a lot we'd all basically you know we'd all basically become board gods at the end of the day maybe we'd start our own wars our own planets or something like that maybe the mormons were right is that what you're saying the mormons are right all along? Maybe, we'll have to well uh, if we all become gods then it'd be kind of like a greek tragedy wouldn't it? Mm. That we'd all find planets to, to govern and set people against each other just for just our for entertainment, our entertainment. Yeah. right so the problem with me on that, and yeah, you have a right. There's you have a point. There's nothing I can do for infinite, an infinite amount of time that would ever keep me entertained, even if it was vastly varied, because I'm going to exhaust it all. My brain needs new things to mm -hmm. stay entertained. That's just how we are. We like for growth novelty and we yeah. like to grow, right? Uh at least we should. I could definitely imagine. If you were to take that aspect away from me, then we're not talking about me anymore. We're talking about some sort of programmed brain in a vat that's no longer Tyrone. And if that's what my soul is and it's put to heaven, that's great. But that's not me. And right. that's I, that's what I care about. And so if I go to heaven, I want to be exposed to novel stuff. I want to learn new things. And if I'm here for an infinite amount of time, I will eventually run out of stuff. It just is by factor of how things right. are. And we haven't even considered the alternative. What's up? Not going to heaven. Ha ha ha. Yeah. So <laughs> and eternity there. Yeah, that sucks. Too. I mean, what what could a, per a person possibly do that would warrant uh, being burned for eternity? I mean, even Hitler, with all the people that he killed, if you took all the people he killed and added up all the lives that he robbed them of, Ooh. would not approach eternity. You know. <laughs> seven million dead or eight million dead you know right. times what they live 50 years mm -hmm. after you know it's only so much amount of time he should at least be out good after say a million years of uh yeah of so it's like torture. infinite infinite punishment for a finite crime is and and most people cool. according to the religious mm -hmm. go to hell for not believing as right. the religious believe mm -hmm. is that worthy of eternal torture Right. I mean, there's no fairness there. And right. God is supposed to be loving. A loving right. God is more than more merciful than just fair. Mm. And maybe uh, there's so much contradictions there. Right. And perhaps a highlight to like our yeah, just for not believing in a God that refuses to 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 make themselves explicitly clear to you. That could yeah. be justification for internal punishment. Right. In and getting back to your original question you mentioned five sure. minutes ago, ten. Sure was where did evil come from oh where did evil come from according to the bible isaiah 45 7 atheist. came from no. atheists what no isaiah 45 7 in king james version i form the light and create darkness i make yep. peace and create evil i the lord do all these things that's just one verse there's no yeah. out of context or anything it's all in one verse. <laughs> i made uh, everything right mm -hmm. yep. so when and you made evil yeah, you've made sin, you made the devil. When you are the <clears throat> arbiter of the rules and how to break them and create the vices that make us break them, it's sort of like, and it throws me back to like just square one. Um, a lot of things that are sinful, that are explicitly sinful in the Bible, don't have to exist, yet God makes them exist. And that goes from shellfish to fabrics of mixed cloth to even formats of sex with body parts that seem to perfectly fit each other, right? Why, why, why makes round pegs for, for round holes if they're if they if that was 
the most blasphemous thing that you could do. There's so many other different kinds of designs for things we could have had. You could have had a pollinating system. You could have had a right angle turn. There's so many things you could have done, but yet you, you made it so easy and then said, by the way, that's super, super bad. And if you do it, that's bad. It's like, then why did you make gay people? Like, if gay people's bad, why'd you make gay people? If um, yeah. shellfish is bad, why'd you make shellfish? And it, it doesn't matter in the end. I mean, if you read the Bible, and, it, you know, they tell you all these things you shouldn't do. But when it comes right down to it, what will send you to hell? Not, Not accepting believe. Jesus yep. as, your, as your Savior. That's exactly. the one thing that will send you to hell. And why don't you just give us knowledge? And if of that no matter what else you do, if you accept him as your savior, you go to heaven. It doesn't right. matter. Good Even, you know, the, the ultimate uh, bad example, Hitler was a Christian. He was a Catholic. And you know that he, before he committed suicide or was killed at the end, that he accepted. Uh, how do they know penance. that? How do they know that? How do they, how do they know that? Did, did the the not survived. Yeah. Yeah. I know but, they say um, that for Albert Einstein. I know, for example, they went to a um, a senile Albert Einstein, uh, a Catholic did, and forced him to confess his soul to God. Mm -hmm. And they used that as proof of him being um, Christian the entire time, like this great mind. But he never lived a life of... No. Of a he had no personal person. God. He said so right. himself in his writings. Exactly. You know, it also reminds me of like... North Korea, and like you were talking about hell, um, you happen to know of a story of a person that was connotating atheism. So like we we're talking about before, people who connotate great minds with Christianity. There are a lot of people who connotate bad things with atheism, I think, and it's somewhat misleading. And you had an example for North Korea, for example. Yeah, uh, there, I get notifications by, by Google, uh, from Google, whenever there's an article that mentions atheism in it or atheists. And I got one this morning, the article was written. It said the title of it was uh, my time in the atheist hell of North Korea. My time in the atheist hell of North <laughs> yeah. Korea. And you know that it was written by, by a Christian because they would consider anything that bad as being atheist. However, uh, North Korea is not an atheist nation. They, their president is a dead person, a guy, and they had call him a god. He's a god, and they worship him. They worship and him. his offspring are also worshipped as god, right. dead or alive. Right. Uh, they are ruled by a necroscopy. Right. It, there um, is a there is a supernatural dogma that comes to the belief system of the 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 leaders of Korea. Like it's not just oh these are the old presidents. No, it's like these guys walk down from a mountain could control physics with their intent, um, uh, bless fields to make them prosper and grow, uh, protect us from foreign invaders with just their willpower alone. There's a variety of like supernatural aspects that come with that. Th that's not something a regular person can do. Yeah. And the response to that would be, well, because they're not regular people, they're super beings. And, and, mm -hmm. and their proof of their existence is the fact that their lineage still is here. And we pray to them and honor them on a regular basis so that we will be protected, continue right. to be protected mm. by them. So it's a religious state. Yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a real it's a religion in its own right, honestly. That uh, with with just you know some modernism behind it, because you know they have like a, a broken down version. In order to maintain a religion like that, here I put it, you have to limit the access to information that the people have. Keep them because in a stuff, bubble. Yeah, in an information like bubble. Which is really surprising because North Korea could learn a lot from how Americans operate. Because they'd say, wait, you believe in Jesus and you have the internet and books? Why are we working so hard when you're that gullible? Maybe we could just like, maybe we could just open up our borders because I don't think people are as critical thinking as we originally were worried about. But right. yeah, it's um, it's a shame. The the My weird little needle to this story um, of an atheist hell larry is that if you're an atheist you don't follow with hell right so like the two terms you don't what you don't you don't you don't subscribe to the idea or the oh concept right of hell. Mm -hmm. yeah so like and whenever, generally not the concept of the soul right matter. so like i have no concept yeah exactly it's like i don't have an atheist soul i don't have an atheist hell there's nowhere in the world where i'd say like oh that's an atheist hell right there it's just it is 
it's a misnomer that's provided from a Christian lens. It's a boogeyman. Yes. It's yeah. basically a Christian putting together words of two bad things and putting them together without realizing that this is oil and water and they honestly don't mix together. And it only speaks more to the fact that when you want to find out what an atheist is, when you want to find out what atheism is all about, don't go to a Christian to figure that out. Like when someone describes anything as an atheist hell, they're likely talking about two things they have no idea about a, a supernatural landscape of hell and two, what atheism is and what mm -hmm. it's all about. And you've probably stopped listening to this person with regard to any of those two, because they're not nearly an authority on those as, as they will. It's a right. Right. One of the articles I have on my blog is called, why would you go to your preacher for information about atheism? Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, it's like talking to your prison guard on, on an escape plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have had conversations with people who were Christians only because they were raised that way and were very adamant that they knew everything about atheism. And I, when I let them know I'm an atheist, they, and I do it in a really friendly way, you know, what it is right. uh, they get immediately shooken up and I'm like, Hey, if you have questions about atheism, I'll happily tell you about it. It's like, no, I know everything about atheism. Yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, how I, that would be the equivalent of me saying, well, I know everything about Christianity because I talked to you. Right. And that's not necessarily accurate. Well, they haven't been talked to you about it at that point. They just exactly. talk to you. But yeah, they have these preconceived notions that as soon as you say you're an atheist, they they are blown mm. and they don't want to let them go. Mm. So you know, the first time I told anybody uh, that was not, well, I guess it was the first time I really just came out and told somebody that I was an atheist. It was it was a lady and she said, oh, no, you're not. Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> yeah, a sweetest little Southern accent you ever heard. Yeah. Uh, because... Yeah. It, it conflicted with a preconceived notion of what an atheist was because she mm. knew me right 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 yeah. true and not only that you know. but like when i um started telling people that i was an atheist i was actually surprised because i thought everyone around me was christian and i was shocked i was just as shocked when i heard other people tell me oh i'm an atheist too and these are people that i either liked or didn't even like I'd be like, right. wait, I didn't even like you, and you're an atheist. I might like you more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, is it so, there is something about someone not believing in an imaginary being that's controlling the entire universe. Even that, even if on a personality level you don't like them, just the fact that you guys are on that same page is like, I got a lot of more respect for you leaving mm -hmm. out of this. I was like, yeah. okay, at least, at least you're aware and with it and, and reasonable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I might right. give you a second chance. Right. Yeah. No, I met a lot of those after starting uh, um, the Atheist Society in Knoxville, mm. but uh, they generally turned out to be great people anyway. Uh, fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Hey, we're at the bottom of the half hour. I want to uh, start with, uh, before we head out, there was a comment that we got from KMPM6QE who said, ASK as an ask? I love that. So shout out to the Atheist Society yeah. in Knoxville. Cool. Very good. All right. Larry, take us out. Okay, let me bring this. I should know it by heart, I know. Uh, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter 5 or Larry Rhodes. We're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM Knox, in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. Uh, it was founded in 2002. We're in our 21st year now, have over a thousand members, and we have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top table, or if it's pretty weather, outside on the deck. You can also find us online at Facebook, meetup.com, or at our website, knoxvilleatheist.org. You can also just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. That's right. Wombat, where do you want to pick up? Uh, I, have a fun, I have a fun topic. Uh, it's one that we tend to go on tangents with normally on every show, but we just made a little segment for it. And this one's called God's a Bully. And I'm not saying this in the sense of, man, what atheists do all day is they just 
think about why they hate God so much. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, that's the exact opposite of what we do. Uh, but it is fun when um, the subject of God is brought up. Why uh, certain things that stick out to people who have a bit more of a secular mindset don't immediately stand out to those who have a Christian mindset. So like, that's why it's a fun topic of conversation. So what I want to bring up was God's a bully. And why I wanted to bring that up was, uh, Larry, you were alluding to it earlier, the idea that you can punish someone infinitely or even just an inordinate amount of time for for crimes that range from murder, genocide, to the shellfish they eat, the people they love, the clothes they wear. You know, the, yeah. The and, whole idea is totally disproportionate to the problem, to the crime. Right. It's like you you ate an apple that I gave to you. And that's evil. I'm punishing you. I'm punishing you, your children, your children's children, your children's children. Shows up like, when does this end? It doesn't end. <laughs> yeah. And who, who's responsible for putting that apple in, like, in the first place? This is the first sin that we did. Exactly. Oh, that's a great name. I'm going to call that the first sin. It's like, but we literally didn't know good or bad before we even did it. The apple told us what was good or bad. It's like, mm -hmm. true. But yeah. it's still disobedience. Bad. It's like, we didn't know disobedience was right. But you you literally gave us a snake to tell us to eat it. Like we would we were we were not gonna eat the apple until you yeah. told us where the apple was and what to do with it. Like we Plus, were totally he, fine he, with everything. He, he's else. omniscient, he knows everything, he knew what was gonna happen. Right. So he like, was just laying a trap for humanity and we fell right into it. Right. And as as we were. It's not a trap. It's like that was the intention. Like if I if I go to a if I bought a Lego set. I keep telling people this. If I bought a Lego set and the Lego set has a picture of a red car on it, right? It's a model red car. And I go home and I take out the pieces and I have red car pieces and I put four tires on the on the on the top of a red car piece and I have a red car piece, that's not a trap. That was the intent. That's the point. That's the Traps whole thing. Traps can be intentional. I mean, you when you're tr trying I'm not to track tricking a wolf anybody, or something. Like, yeah, you, but you like, put out a trap with the intention of catching. I hear you. I hear you. But there's a difference between like a chance of it not happening and me manufacturing every single step and putting it together. Like when I fabricate something by its design, that's me. I did that. I didn't trap myself. I just did something. Like I didn't trap the car into become the Lego pieces into becoming a car. I just made them into a car. I can't turn around and be like, "Oh, that's you. I trapped you," or like, "I got you." Oh. There was no, there's no agency. I thought you the you it, was being an example of Adam oh, and Eve, but you're saying it's the the example of being God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Adam and Eve had no agency in the sense because they had no idea of more right or wrong. They had no awareness right. of their actions. They had no awareness of where to get these pieces. They were just things that God made and put together and said, ah, oh, it's now your fault. It's like, no, you did mm -hmm. this. This is all right. you. If this like is a I, problem, like I like to say, he could have taken the apple tree or the fruit tree and put it on the moon. He exactly. didn't have to put it in the middle of the of the uh the garden. He could have made it 10 feet tall and just said, ah, I don't, there's no ladders. Don't worry about right. it. It's, right. There's so many different kinds of trees you could have made where it's just like an overhanging thing. You could have made it a rock that was 10 feet under the ground and gave them no shovels and they would never figure it out. Mm -hmm. It was so, why make it an apple? Why make it an apple? And if it was an apple, why make it such that eating this apple yeah. will biochemically break down into better knowledge for someone's yeah. right or wrong? And before we get a lot of uh, mail, it's not an apple. We know it's not an apple. It's we the know. Fruit. We know it's a fruit. We know, but I'm just saying you could have made it something that was inedible. You could have made it like a cloud. You could have made it intangible. You could have made it hard as a rock and they couldn't eat it. You could have made it a scroll in a language they couldn't read. There's so many different ways you could have formatted that, but you wanted this. God wanted this to happen. When I say you, you're right. Larry, I should be more clear. God wanted this to happen with such intentionality that you can't just turn around and be like, oh, but it was a trap for humanity. It's like, no, it was a thing that God did that he's now angry at us for. For no for no reason. Like and I blamed I us. my car. And blamed us. Not... And everybody that we had, every children we had all the way down the line, even though they didn't do anything. Right, right, right. If I put gas in my car and I say, I'm gonna drive to Knoxville, I'm gonna go check you out later and I'm gonna drive back home, and my car runs out of gas, that's not a trap that my that I can blame my car for. That's me because I know the mileage of my car. I should know where the gas stations are. The only person to blame is me if I run out of gas. And the idea that you can 
blame that on people is yeah is it's a fairy cool. tale it's it's a mother goose if you look at it with all the elements that we know go into fairy tales yeah and from an outside perspective you will see that it's a just so story it's why it it's a story built to explain things we don't understand without I, the story and people say well that's the old testament it shouldn't change it's like okay fine well you know leaving aside the fact that god's perfect and shouldn't change let's just take it to this level where if i have a neighbor and let's say my neighbor loves me very very much he loves me so much that he yesterday he took out his little son walked him out in front of his front yard put up erected this big piece of wood and and took out some hammers and just started nailing his son to this this wooden stake and i look at him i'm like hey what are you doing that your son's screaming out in pain and he looks at me very confidently very smugly he's like i'm doing this for you (laughs) (laughs) and i'm like i didn't ask you to do that he's like i'm doing it for you calm down this is part of the (laughs) plan i'm like you should go to jail you we should get child services over here citizens arrest this is citizens (laughs) arrest this is we're gonna the ambulance we're gonna take this kid away from you and keep him away Mm -hmm. from you you shouldn't be raising you would and And that's not even that's not even talking about abraham and his son oh yeah Yeah. we've moved on to new testament we're talking strictly new testament now like i'm saying like that story makes no sense that is a Mm -hmm. that is in any other context you'd say what are you doing? Why are you doing it's like because he loves you so much, he gave his one and only son, a part of him, you know, truly like one single body to, yeah, to, to it, evolve it, it, your sins. I'm like, one, I don't care. Two, I didn't ask for that. Three, that's really terrible. And like, four, we still have sin. <laughs> <laughs> four, it wasn't even that effective. Yeah, oh, and, no. and the whole thing about the, the global flood wasn't that supposed to get rid of evil? We still got evil. Mm. Yeah, it's a real problem. Uh, It's not an effective measure to uh, uh, to to nail your own family to crosses for the sake of other people. You know, it'd be one thing if I asked for that, you know, like a lot of the things in the Bible, particularly in the New Testament, is just a sequence of, oh, but I didn't ask for that. Thank you, though. No, thank you. And it goes from Mary's pregnancy. Uh, you know, we're talking about like bronze era, uh, in a time where honor killings are still a thing. Um, an angel going up to a lady and being like, Hey, you're pregnant now. Congratulations. And the lady's like, yeah. Oh no, that's a death sentence. That's a death sentence. That's literally a death sentence. Like, yeah, because she was not married. <laughs> I literally will need to run away from my family now. This is like not a good situation. It's like, no, no, no. Everybody's gonna know that you you gave birth, that you're pregnant. Everybody's gonna know. It's gonna be amazing. It's like, no, 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 I don't want this. Too bad you're pregnant. It's like, oh, that's and, I'm not even married. And you think about situation. the personal touch. God didn't even tell her himself. He <laughs> sent an errand boy to tell him, tell her, I mean. Right, right. That's a terrible situation. Um, you know, and of course, the story that I keep bringing up is there's one, there's one example of consent being accepted in the Bible. Uh, I would probably say it's the only one and the best one where there's a supernatural being that's asking something of a human and the human says, no, thank you. And the supernatural being is like, I respect that. See you later. And just goes away. And the Mm -hmm. only time that happens is when it's got Jesus being tried or, or going through trials on a mountaintop away from his followers. And the Satan Satan comes, yeah. Okay. Satan comes down to Jesus and he's like, Jesus is up there for multiple days. and, And Satan's like, Hey, you know, there's a whole, you can look at this whole town. And if you worship me, I will let everybody in that town worship you. Like I can make that happen. And if you want to, I can even give you powers. I can, I can do anything you want. I believe he was talking about the entire world. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I can make this really easy for you. And Jesus is like, get away from me, Satan. I don't need your help. I refuse to worship (laughs) you. I will never worship you. I'm the best ever. And, And Jesus and Satan's like, okay, that's fine. I can accept that. I respect. And he goes away. There's no punishment. There's no retribution. Well, that, he wasn't no talking about God. He wasn't talking to God, though. I mean, God is the one that punishes you for refusing. <laughs> you know, yeah, just how many people did the de- the devil kill? In, in, no, uh, exactly. In the yeah, the death count is actually remarkably low. I don't even think there's a direct death. <clears throat> Job's family. And that was after God gave him permission to do it. And God could have stopped it from happening, too, honestly. Right, right. But, uh, 
and that was part of the bet that God God was betting on that to it's like hey why don't we betting think, human we lives think? and stuff right 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 yeah. but honestly the idea of of Satan just being like ah oh, that's fine I can respect that and he just goes away and like nothing bad happens I always feel and it's always hard for me to express this in a way that's that's meaningful but I always feel like the Bible is written from the point of view of a tyrant writing his own autobiography where everything that he's doing that's absolutely objectively terrible is framed as if it's actually really cool and interesting with his intent but if you just look at it outside outside our test of faith love me or i will punish you forever let me kill my son to absolve you of rules that you that i made that you broke right um let me drown all the babies on earth so i can do a fresh restart even yeah. though but i'll give I you a rainbow I'll give you a <laughs> rainbow. Yeah. yeah. So it is, but I always feel like, and and this is just me. I know these are fake characters. I know this isn't real, but it sort of speaks to how oblivious the people were who wrote the Bible, right? Because they only wanted big, powerful figures. That was the whole idea of the Bible. But if if this was real characters, it almost feels as if Satan is the character that's the good guy who just sneaks in and is always trying to be honest respectful and 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 uh, self-aware enough to not try to alert the tyrant of what his agenda is but to demonstrate how a being should be so in the garden of evil what's he doing he's telling adam and eve the truth and he's expressing that with no weird conditions that's whatsoever he's saying listen if you eat this you're going to have this happen to you god's not telling you that but this is what you need to do in order to like be on this path. And you should eat this. You have a right to do it. Like your, your life currently doesn't have a purpose. Um, going up to heaven and, and showcasing that I, as the leader of hell, can, uh, can be invited to heaven and, and bet on people's lies. And I can put this in a framework where it makes me seem like the bad guy in the book. But honestly, you should be thinking like, who is God's bedfellows if he can invite people from hell and 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 put wages on his followers? Well, you well, got to remember that Satan was a, an angel. Mm -hmm. He started off as an angel. Was just yeah. being really pretty, and God was like, mm -hmm. "You're not as pretty as me." And I was like, "Is that literally why I'm being sent to hell?" Yes. I'm like, okay, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I'm I'm a, I'm just a pretty angel. <laughs> 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 like, did I kill anybody? No, I kill people. It's like, okay, all right. So I'm just. I'm just a pretty guy. Yeah, you thought you were as pretty as me, but no one's as pretty as me. I'm God. It's like fair yeah. enough. That, fair enough. That's that's worth internal damnation as the the main figurehead of of hell. Mm -hmm. uh, but the the interaction he had with Jesus on that mound, uh, every single time the devil shows up, it's always like, hey, I I'm here to respect your time. Here's the situation. I'll tell you it honestly, and if you say no, I'll accept that and move away. Well, if you swap those personalities and you just had a God that was like willing to be honest show up and 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 not be like oh there's a burning bush that must be god oh there's a dove on my shoulder that might just be god no a devil will show up and be like hey hi how are you i'm the devil let me explain to you what's going on here like if god could just do that and just say hey i'm god by the way you were uh you're born i'm expressing myself to you so you can we can start this early here's a relationship i want to have with you i'll check in with you every 10 years or something like that it would be nice to have it like that because god had intervene in other people's lives before yet for whatever reason he stopped now and why should we hold ourselves to the same standard of belief for people who had the direct interventionist god in their lives to just hold us to a different to hold us to the same standard with much lower evidence just seems inherently unfair and bully-like and it's well, yeah. that really bothers and the whole thing about hell anyway is like uh god loves you but he'll send you to hell if you if you don't Accept his son as is the uh, uh, God and Savior. Basically, mm. it's love with a gun to your head. Yeah, it's it's an abusive relationship. Yeah, um, you are worth nothing, mm. you know. But I will take care of you, and you know if you worship me, mm. it's it's like the epitome of um, abuse. And it's never just accept God, right? It's now that you accept God. Now you have to pay me 10% of your paycheck and you have to stop having sex in this particular way. And you have to dress this certain way and you have to show up at church at these particular times. And if we ask you to do something, you have to be a soldier of the truth. You have to mm -hmm. listen to this guy who speaks to God and trust whatever he says and edicts that he passes down. There's a lot more to it than just accept Jesus because 
anyone can say that as they would say uh, and, but it's a lifestyle change that is well that brings us back to pascal's wager mm. that they Why use so often okay go, go uh, it says uh, uh you should believe in god anyway because if you don't believe uh you could lose everything if you mm. do believe even if it's it's wrong you haven't lost anything but if it's right mm. you know you gain everything in the world you haven't lost anything if it's wrong and the thing about it is you know they uh, i forget where i'm going now but Oh yeah, that you have to uh, if you accept the wager and God's not real, you haven't lo you have lost things. You've yes. lost the time, the money, yes. the self respect. If you don't believe, mm. and but you just accept it beyond to because of the wager, mm. you lose this, your your self respect and and you put yourself under the control of of preachers, right? And people my, don't realize that part. My sister is a Muslim and she prays five times a day. And I asked her, wouldn't you like to get that time back? And she's like, I only pray five times a day. And I'm like, yeah, but like, how much time is that? It's like five minutes. She's like, no, it's about like 10 minutes each day. And I'm like, that's an hour every day. So like seven hours a week, like you could learn to play instruments in that time, game, get new hobbies, hang out with friends, make new food. Like there's so much at the end of a year, we're talking about Oh my gosh, thousands of hours like this. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of time. And I would say, you know, if I was ever on my deathbed, I would say, man, I'd love to get those hundreds of thousands of hours back rather than just being with my eyes closed, head, forehead to the ground, appeasing the other people who are praying around me that their God is true, right? And, and using that time more in my interest because who who am I satisfying when I do this? And I and right. I'm praying. And multiply, when I'm doing that? Like, makes no multiply all of that by the members of your family if you're the household mm -hmm. head, you know, and you make everybody do it. Right. It's sort of like having a commute to work and you're not going anywhere. You're just getting in your car and you're just driving in one big circle around town and you're just doing this. And you're like, where did you go today? In one big circle. It's like, why would, why would you do that? Why would you put the miles on your car? <laughs> you just sit there like, what's the point? It's like, mm -hmm. don't tell them, this is my lifestyle. It's like, you're putting carbon in the air. What are you doing? Like, just do something. No, no, I'll, I'll get my reward after I die. <laughs> yeah, that's literally it, you know? Yeah, you're putting pennies, yeah. what you think is in a piggy bank. Perfect bag. Ponzi scheme. You never yeah. have to pay off. Mm. But I also have another friend of mine who is a Muslim who was a scientist, a, f a colleague of mine, and he said that he prays to keep his family safe. And there's a dynamic to the two. So you talked about Pascal's wager. The reason why he he was an atheist, but the reason, but he when he is in his country, and I don't want to explicitly say which one, but it was uh, dominated by Islam, he would pray to in front of other people at these community areas where you pray, just so that everybody knew he was. Muslim, because if he didn't, that would be a problem for his, the safety of his family. Sure. Yeah, peer pressure. And, and it's 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 when we say peer pressure in America, we think, oh, she's gonna call him fat. It's like, no, these people are gonna come to my house and kill my family if they don't think that I'm with this because I'm, I'm societal well -known. pressure. Yeah, yeah I, there's a there's a threat of violence intimidation. In my yes, intimidation. It's a true threat. And mm -hmm. I couldn't. And so when he got another job so he can continue to support his family, but it was near uh, an area that he would have to move back to back overseas. I felt bad for him. I, and he felt bad, too, because he would have to continue the charade of maintaining this this belief. And who's to say he wasn't the only one like he would pray so hard that he would have a little ring on his head. Right. And mm -hmm. it was that indication that he was. Uh, praying that other people would look for and use as a judgment. And anyone who didn't have that ring on their head would be suspect in their particular social circles. That is, that's such a telltale sign of how evil it can be, you know, and yeah. the bullying that can extend to not just the leader of the bullies, but the followers of the bullies and how they bully each other. That's how a system like that works. All right. So I don't consider this bullying, Larry, but have you ever been told, bless you? In hey, nice segue. <laughs> Have you ever been told bless? Oh you? yeah, yeah, I definitely do. Talk to I me mean, about it. Talk to me about well, it. Well, it's it's like every time I go into a, pretty much every time I, I do a restaurant, uh, mm -hmm. especially new restaurants, because uh, I, I know restaurants that I go to that it doesn't happen. But uh, you know, the waitress will say bless you, and then the cashier will say bless you, 
you know, oh. have a blessed day. It's not like bless you for a sneeze. Right. This is, you know, have a blessed day yeah. uh, type of thing. But you just let it slide. I mean, because, you know, it's, you know, that's how they express themselves. What? Um, now, as I listen, I I follow all the atheist stereotypes. I'm on all the atheist reddits. You're that's unacceptable. That never happens. Whenever an atheist is told "bless you," they immediately start. Well, a I dialogue, certainly feel a like Socratic I should say something. But dialogue where yeah. they break down the person's belief and makes them feel like an idiot. Why aren't Why aren't you doing the the thing you're supposed to do? Where's your atheist card? Let me cut a corner off. Of it. <laughs> that is not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> but everybody has their own. Uh, uh, you know mores that they follow but that's mm. not one of mine mm, uh, I, I i think that there are much better hills to die on yeah I I, i've actually been in a conversation with believers who are talking amongst themselves who assumed i was a believer too and they're like yeah and what's the deal with atheists always getting angry with people saying bless you and stuff like that and i just calmly said well i'm an atheist and i have no problem with people saying bless you and that stopped the entire conversation because mm -hmm. I don't think those people ever saw an atheist to begin with. And I think, one, it's important to let people know you're an atheist for, for that reason. But two, when people say bless you, it, it's more of a contextual environment of self-expression, right? So like right. if I'm in Rome, and let's say I'm maybe a bit back at war at yeah. time, and they say, the gods yeah. be with you. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that because they believe in multiple gods. If I'm right. in India and they have a... a, a, a uh, what do they say? Salamat pagi. Uh, there's like a um, uh, more uh, eight, uh, what is it? It's more of a godly way of saying good morning. And there's definitely, you know, similar like a, a salam for peace be on to mm -hmm. you. Uh, there's people are just wishing yeah. goodwill. That's it. I, yeah. I'm and what, what gets me is uh, you can, if you are the one atheist who has, uh, takes exception to it. Mm. Uh, the waitress or whatever will think that there's only one atheist that she met that day when she might have yes. met 20. He said, yes. I'm not a real jerk today. He was an atheist. Right. And there you are. You know, yeah. she's, you know, she could have been meeting him all day long without knowing it. Right, right. And it's only the one that made an upset fuss about it mm -hmm. that starts the yeah. stereotype. Yeah. So maybe, maybe a better response would be, hey, I'm an atheist, but bless you too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that'd be a nice way of saying it uh, i'll have to try uh, that <laughs> yeah i'll have to think about that that might be worth that might be a worthwhile uh never my main thing though and here's where i draw the line someone can wish me bless you i have no problem with that the problem i have is when someone starts to force me to bless their god and when they do mm -hmm. so it's is examples of them putting god bless america on my license plate and I'm thinking this is sure. a state issued or money license plate. Don't put it on my money. Take it off of money. Ideally, don't put it on my license plate. Don't make me sign up. Don't have like when I'm doing like a, a driver's exam or something like that. Make the section. What's your religion? Don't, don't bother God? me on Saturday by coming don't to my door. Don't hand me pamphlets when I'm walking down the street. Don't leave, yeah, don't leave stuff in my doorway about how Jesus is going to save me and stuff like that. Like, don't don't not pay taxes if you're going to start taking up land in our area like when i see like land being excavated and it, it's not a home or a business but rather another church and we and i can look down that same street and see two other churches just on separate blocks from each other and i know this is another tax-free building i know no well there can't be another school here because the church isn't paying property taxes the the school is going to be underfunded um that sucks uh i want to see I want to have a world where I'm not forced to worship your God because any Christian wouldn't want to be forced to worship Allah. Any Muslim wouldn't want to be forced to worship Jehovah. So why are we mandating these expressions in a governance sense, like on our government issued stuff, money, license plate, um, uh, in some cases, your work titles, uh, in other cases, like when you try to apply for things, your religion shows up. We talked a uh, last right. week about mm -hmm. court cases where you can't even raise your kids or the fact that you could be non-believer could be used against you in terms of custody cases. Like, why is that a factor? Like, in if it being governed by a truly objective party, it shouldn't matter what yeah. my religious yeah. and is, right? Other things that courts do is they, like, if you're if you brought in for a public alcoholism, they may send you to AA. 
yes. which is a, a, a religious based um, ha habit breaking association. Right. They will also send you to Christian counseling if right. you're having marriage troubles or something, and you know, Larry, let's say that you need counseling. They'll 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 enforce it there. Larry, I'm very upset with you because you took your motorcycle and you rammed it into the back of my car. And I know you're an atheist and you mean well, but that's damaged. I'm going to have to take you to court. So they take us both to court. And the first thing they do to court is try to swear our testimony. And they give us a Bible. <laughs> they're like, do you swear on this Bible to tell the truth, the whole truth? And you're like, I don't know. I don't want the Bible. And they give it to me. It's like, I don't want the Bible either. <laughs> and they're like, well, neither, no one's testifying. We're going to have to throw this court case out. And I'm like, ah, dang it, Larry. You got me again. You got me again. <laughs> Why no, I, I would ask to you know, <laughs> swear on the Constitution or something, something I respect. Right. So, like, don't force us to to or either advertently or inadvertently to to, you know, yeah. give dues to your God. But you, as your own right, can feel free to express it. That's where I draw the line. So if someone says, bless you in a cashier uh, as I'm checking out, not an issue. But if someone tries to etch that onto my license plate, I got a problem with that. Please don't do that. Please don't right. force me to worship your God, you know? I, or live I, by rules that your religion uh, teaches. Or, or swear to your God if I need to tell the truth, which is such a dumb thing to even do. It is, yeah. Uh, oh, man, Larry, we're almost at the end of the show. Anyway, uh, hopefully we had an entertaining shot talk. Uh, thank you guys so much for all the comments. Let me throw up one more. Uh, <laughs> ka, como, oh, my gosh. Como você... Ab Fabulis says, great chat, guys. Uh, and he said it also at the 17 mark. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and guys, uh, Dada's trading room is saying live. Um, he has some corrections on some of the things that we were saying about Bronze Age. That makes sense. Uh, we don't get yeah. our dates. Absolutely. You don't have any questions? Uh, uh, there's one that says it wasn't an apple, guys. <laughs> <Bonjour>. <laughs> We appreciate the feedback. Thank you, guys. You know, it's, you're right. It's a fruit. I, we, we're, I'd be facetious, but uh, you're right. There's there's explicit terms, and we need to make sure we get them right. But in Big Swings, um, we aren't just entertainment for heaven. We are people. We have agency, and we matter. Uh, North Korean isn't, Korea isn't an atheist hell. They, in fact, have a religion. It's just religions don't call it a religion because they want to seem austere and but right it well it's it's religion. a bad place so they're going to say it's an atheist place it's yeah 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 they don't want to just call it another religion but yeah that's absolutely it but also anyone who says atheist hell don't take them for credit because those words don't combine together to mean anything yeah. god is a bully deal with it and if someone says bless you it's not a problem if someone tries to etch bless you on your property or on your body or, or use that to deny the fact that they don't have to pay taxes to contribute like a meaningful member of society, that's a problem. And that's where we draw the line. Uh, Larry, those were my final words. Go on ahead and take us out. Okay. Well, if you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, and many do, you can get help from Recovering From Religion. Uh, it's recoveringfromreligion.org, and that is their website address as well. My content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject of atheism. My YouTube channel handle is at Doubter5. And you can find my book on atheism called Atheism, What's It All About? on Amazon. Remember, everybody is going to some other religion's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye. everybody. Good and show. That's a wrap. I Yay. Yeah. I enjoyed that. Good All show. Right. Wrap up. Enjoy Horizon Zero Dawn. It's a really, really good game. I, I highly, highly recommend it. I'm so glad that you're playing that. You made yeah. my week. You made yeah. my week. <laughs> Give me an oh. update next week if we if okay. On, on well, thanks for recommending. Where you're at, it. I'll watch my spoilers. But you're gonna have a really fun time. There will be parts where you're like playing the game. And you're like, this looks so cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it does. It's a beautiful game. Yeah, you know, great vistas and everything. Yeah, it's so cool. And then you just get to explore, and you're just exploring. You're like, mm -hmm. this is fun. That's this is just one fun. of the famous favorite parts of games like that is just exploring. Yeah, yeah, just pick a point on the map and just go. And there's cool stuff that happened along the way. I hope you got the DLC too. The DLC is also really good. All right. Okay. Bye, my friend. Take care.